Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I read so far in March. I've read nine books so far in March, so let's get into the books. I do want to mention, um, yes, again, you're dealing with Colossus Avery. Um, that is because, again, I got a sty again. <laughs> Isn't that just so wonderful? Another sty, another one. It's in a different area of my eye. You can tell this eye is more swollen. Maybe you can't because my glasses, but this eye is much more than this eye. And it all popped up yesterday. So it's going to get worse before it gets better. Um, but don't worry, I ordered like a giant care package for myself off of Amazon for everything I need to deal with a sty again. I just ordered like a bunch of new makeup, new contact case, new contact lenses. Like I don't want to do this again. And this is just the first day with it and I know it's gonna get even worse. So um, I'm not gonna put any makeup today. This is bare face me. <laughs> it is just my luck that in the past like three, I think wrap up videos that I've done or two, I've had a sty in all of them. <laughs> and in like no other video, just my wrap ups. Okay, let's get into these nine books. We're gonna go in chronological order. So the books that I read at the beginning of the month and then go work our way through. The first book that I ended up reading in March is Fearless Duke by Scarlet Scott. This is the last and sixth book in the League of Dukes series by Scarlet Scott. This is a series that I've been buddy reading with Rachel over at Rachel Waits and Sings. We've been reading a book every single month and it's over. It's over. It's okay. Rachel and I have been buddy reading like other books. We have other plans and all other series we're gonna buddy read because I just love buddy reading with her. But um, we're done with this series. It's so tragic, but we love Scarlet Scott. So we're probably going to read more Scarlet Scott books together. If you don't know about the League of Dukes series, it's about these guys who are kind of like undercover, undercover detectives, um, but they're also dukes. And they're trying to take down this terrorist group of um, Irishmen who are very dangerous to like the UK because they keep putting bombs out and terrorizing people because they want independence from England and the way that they think they can do that is by bombing and killing people, um, which is a no-no, obviously. Um, and so these men are, these dukes, are trying to find this Fenian group and take it down, basically. So that's what each book is essentially about. Benedict, our hero in here, is the leader of the Special League. Uh, so he's the leader of all of these dukes and he is in need of a typewriter um, for certain things involving his business and personal life. Like he needs a typewriter, someone to typewrite for him. And he has basically fired the like five women that our heroine in here, um, what's her name? Isabella has sent his way. She's the owner of the typewriter business company, whatever. He has sent all of them packing because there's like one little thing that pisses him off basically or he's annoyed by or he thinks they're incompetent and so he just sends them home like basically fires them they run out crying and so Isabella is sick of this so she decides to go there herself she goes to his place to confront him basically and to kind of like chew him out for being so mean to these women and she leaves his house with an arrangement. If she is able to stay his typewriter for a week, if she does certain tasks for him and she doesn't quit and he doesn't fire her for a whole week, he will then promote her typewriting school, which is like a big thing because he's a very powerful Duke. Things get a little bit out of hand when their playful banter, hateful banter towards each other uh, turns a little bit lustful <laughs> between the two of them. This was a very entertaining read. I loved the bantering between these two. It was a plus for banter. That was my favorite part of the book for sure. I just personally love other books in the series more. I thought this was a great conclusion to the series and I love how we got to see little glimpses of the past couples at the end of this book. For tropes in this book you have different social classes, a uh, duke's great banter, hate to love, historical romance, and it and it is a workplace romance. I ended up giving this one four out of five stars. Next I read Frantor by Honey Phillips. This is book number six in the Seven Brides for Seven Amian Brothers series. This is a reimagining of the classic tale Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, but it's set on an alien planet. Human women from this planet get kidnapped by these uh, alien brothers in arms on their ranch during a snowstorm, so they can't really like leave. But these aliens mean well, like they don't know that this is wrong. <laughs> they just think, oh, this is how you get brides, you have to kidnap them. This book is definitely my favorite in the series. There's seven books in the series. I'll get to book seven later on in this video. Um, but this one is definitely my favorite. And the other books in the series, the ones before this one, you read about Frantor, it's kind of like the recluse. No one sees him. He doesn't really go out and about. He just like keeps to himself because he's experienced a lot of trauma. Frantor was in like battle with his brother in arms. So each guy in this series, each hero, um, they're all brother in arms together. They were part of the same like squad basically for this alien war. And he got in an accident. I think he was in a bomb, bombing of some sort. And he lost um, his arm 
um, and he is covered in scars and so he thinks he looks scary and so he never wants like anyone to be scared of him he's so sweet and so he keeps to himself he doesn't show his face to anybody especially human women because he does not want to make them feel uncomfortable or be scared read about in book two in the series Benjar Benjar decides to go off the rails and just kidnap a bunch of human women from this village next to them during a snowstorm <laughs> and he decides hmm Freytor needs a wife let's just go take one and leave it at his doorstep. So that's exactly what he does. So he kidnaps the heroine in this book. Her name is Flory and she's like, she owns a restaurant in town. So Benjar sees her like cooking things. He's like, oh, perfect. Frantor loves food. Let's give her to him. <laughs> and so he leaves Flory on Frantor's doorstep during a snowstorm so she can't leave. And so she's stuck living in this like run down mill with him um but they're so sweet they get to know each other frantor like keeps a cloak over his face creates a mask for himself because he does not want to scare scare flory but he's craving that human interaction he's craving interaction in general but especially with flory who he just thinks is like the best person in the entire world and flory is falling in love with frantor she was obviously a little bit scared at first she was kidnapped from her home <laughs> and left on this random alien's doorstep but as she gets to know frantor she realizes how amazing he is and she hopes that one day she can like he can trust her enough to like show him who he actually is like on the outside as well as the inside. Like she already loves him on the inside. She's gonna love him on the outside no matter what. I am a huge sucker for romances where the characters don't know what the other person looks like. I don't know why. I'm in love with that. It's like the voice. Like you fall in love with someone's voice before you see what they actually look like. Like I love that in the fact of romance too. Like you fall in love with someone based on who they are on the inside than what they look on the outside. The outside is just like a bonus, you know? I loved both of these characters and it was such a joy. Such a joy reading about these two. There is representation in here for chronic pain. Due to his many injuries, Frantor experiences a lot of chronic pain. And so I related to him in some aspects. Um, but I just really like that additional rep in that book. Um, I think Honey Phillips did a great job with it. Uh, for tropes, if the alien romance, there's a caretaking scene. Um, the hero's having uh, some spasms and chronic pain and the heroine massages his leg. And oh, it turns a little... A little chili pepper if you know what I mean, but it's good. <laughs> so a tortured hero, a foodie romance, forced proximity, Kindle Unlimited, a reclusive hero, there's disability rep, there's a scarred character. It's set during a snowstorm and you have a sweet hero. I give this book five out of five stars. I loved it. Another five star alien romance read is Fall by Claire Kent. This is the book that I've been dying to read a part of the series. Um, This is a part of the whole series. Christy from Christy Reads A Lot. I saw in her story one day on Instagram like, you have to read this book if you love IPV. It gives me so much, so many IPV vibes. And I was like, say less, give that book to me right now. <laughs> um, but I had to read the other books in the series first. So I started during the novella-a-thon and I finally got to fall and I loved it. Lena is a character that we got to meet in book two in the series. And this is about her basically being dumped on this caveman-esque planet it's like basically like prehistoric she gets rescued one day from like being attacked by this animal from the cavemen on this planet that's what like there's no name for them but they're humans that basically act like cavemen their way of life is way different obviously than what she's used to she's used to like traveling in spaceships and doing heists on spaceships and stuff so this is very different than what she grew up with. One of the men in the um, group is Roan and he is just the sweetest bean ever. He's one of the guys who lives in, in the group of cavemen and I love him. And um, that's all I'm gonna say because I don't wanna spoil anything. It was so good. I read this book in one sitting. I just could not put it down. <laughs> I was entranced by the good characters, the amazing story. Like I was obsessed. I could not put my Kindle down for anything. I'm also just obsessed with a very sweet hero and like, a language barrier trope like i eat that up <laughs> i just want more about this couple i love them i love them so much i want more trigger warning is in here for a beating uh a stillbirth not by the main character someone in the group of cave men uh cave people uh have a stillbirth so please be aware that's in there and they are killing animals so death of animals um tropes cavemen Hero Falls First, Kindle Unlimited, Language Barrier, Never Been Kissed, because the hero has never been kissed before. Um, it's a sci-fi romance and you have a sweet hero. I gave this book five out of five stars. I also read Gilmat, which is number seven in the Seven Brides for Seven Alien Brothers series. That series is such a tongue twister for me. <laughs> um, so this is the last book. So Julie is another one of the human women that's been kidnapped from this human town. And Benjar, the dude who's kidnapping all this woman, is like, oh my gosh, Gilmat would love this girl. Let's leave her on his doorstep. He is a like 
plant alien. He can control plants. Julie, our heroine, really loves plants too. She loves reading and plants and everything. And so um, they're just like perfect together. Staying in this little greenhouse. It's more insta lovey compared to like all the other ones I want to say. Um, so please be aware of that if you're not into that. But I thought it was such a cute ending to the series. For tropes in this one, it's alien romance, cinnamon roll hero, Kindle Unlimited, and you have forced proximity. I give this book four to five stars. Then I read Twisted Love by Anna Huang. I've seen a lot of people read this book in the series in general. I'm meeting Anna Huang later this year. And so I definitely wanted to pick up the Twisted series and I did. We're on the roll to reading more of them. Let me know which one is your favorite in this series. I would love to know. Ava in here has an older brother and she's not very happy when her older brother asks his best friend to kind of keep an eye on Ava while he's out of the country um, because like he's being an overprotective brother. Ava who's 22, she's in college, she doesn't think that she needs a babysitter. So she's very annoyed that Alex has to basically be her babysitter. He moves into the house next door to hers, like <laughs> goes full force like watching over her. They're also complete opposites. Like Ava is very bubbly and energetic and sees like life more glass half full than half empty. Whereas Alex is like the complete opposite. He is a grumpy grump and very stoic. And so one of her goals is to kind of like get under his grumpy skin, like just get under under that hard tissue and see what's underneath. And um, she's in for shock when she starts falling in love with the man who is very protective and can be very caring and sweet for the right people. I really loved both of these characters. They go through quite a lot individually and together. So I did love reading about their growth. However, the conflict of the story, there were like multiple points of conflict, just wasn't my favorite. And the like ending part didn't like flow the way I personally wanted it to. It just, it didn't. I guess I'm very picky. But overall, I did enjoy this one. Um, for trigger warnings in this one, you have drowning, kidnapping, PTSD, loss of a loved one, attempted murder, and violence. For tropes, alpha hero, uh, betrayal. So one of the characters betrays the other. Uh, brother's best friend, tortured hero, groveling. This is a good groveling one. Um, grumpy sunshine. Alex has a map on him. Okay. Has a map on him is a new trope of mine. Has a map on him. Dang. Um, I have a, I hate everyone in the world but you. Neighbors, a possessive hero, and a protective hero. I gave this book four out of five stars. Then I ended up reading Argyle's Resonance by Ruby Dixon. This is book number one in her new series, which is called Ice Planet Clones. And you can know all my thoughts about this book in a vlog that I recently posted, where I basically vlog my entire experience only reading this book. Okay, so if you want to know my thoughts and opinions and my rating of this book, you can go watch that vlog. I will link it down below for you. Then I ended up reading an arc for Jillian Graves. She is a part of the Monsters in Love anthology. It's like a bunch of monster romance novellas put together in an anthology. And so she sent her arc readers an early copy of her novella that is a part of this anthology called uh, The Stone and the Star. This novella is, oh my gosh, like chili peppers go lower in this book, okay? Um, it's so good. Like, if you want a fun, short monster novella, like, do it, pick this up. This one is about our human woman named Astrea. I think that's her name, Astrea. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, she's having some fun with herself, okay? Um, outside of a window. And like, her building is right next to this other building where there's gargoyles that are on it, you know? Like, as a decoration. Um, so she's having fun fun with herself while watching or looking staring at this one gargoyle okay and um she doesn't know that gargoyle is actually alive <laughs> he's grinding it very hard to keep his hands off of her to, like there's like the first opening scene is her doing that and um him literally gripping the stone underneath him so he doesn't like fly out and basically take her for himself <laughs> and so this is about that gargoyle making astrea his. <laughs> this was such a joy to read. I really loved Joylene Graves' writing and just like her spies. Oh my gosh. So good in this one. I loved the characters themselves and the storyline. I just think that this would have been like a fantastic full length novel. Like I think like five star worthy, fantastic full length novel. I ended up just giving this novella a four to five stars though. Next, I ended up reading Taken to Varaxia by um, Elizabeth Stevens. The book series has been on my radar for a little bit. Ever since Tiffany sent me the cover, like a new cover, um, she changed the cover to have like actual like illustrated people on the covers and I was sold. This book is very complicated to like explain. It's really hard. But if you want a sci-fi alien romance that reads like a fantasy book, look no further than this author. Like I think her writing style is very similar to when you would pick up a fantasy romance book. And I really like her writing because 
unlike some like fantasy romance authors I have read before who do a lot of world building at the beginning and a lot of explaining about the world and the world system, Elizabeth Stevens just throws you in the deep end and expects you to learn as you go basically. And I find that to be super unique because you don't get that a lot. You kind of have these fantasy romance authors sometimes that just like kind of baby feed you, like force feed you like this knowledge right from the get go. I really loved Elizabeth Stevens writing style because then it had to help my brain move like, ooh, what does that mean? Will I get to learn about that soon? Like it was just super interesting, kind of like a breath of fresh air when it comes to reading something with a complicated world system. This is a romance between two aliens. I've had some viewers ask me, I want to read a romance with a heroine who's an alien. This is one. Both of them are aliens. She is like a red creature and he's blue. Anyway, so Miari, I think that's how you pronounce her name. Um, She lives on this moon, okay, that's mostly entirely inhabited by humans. And um, there's this other alien species that the moon is like, uh, the moon is attached to this planet, you know, like the moon orbits this one planet. And um, a lot of people on the main planet don't know that there are people living on this moon, um, except for you have like the king of the planet, who we'll get to in a second. And he has like a few men underneath him. So one of the guys underneath him has kind of made this planet into like a slave planet okay and so once every like three years human women get chosen to be essayed so taken against their will by for a whole day by some of the aliens that are under this general dude and so the king of the land figures out that the king of the planet figures out that this moon has like certain like things being shipped to it he's like what is going on here and so he decides to go to the moon himself he figures out what is going on and he is mortified he is angry he is pissed okay and then to top it all off he figures out that his 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 faded mate lives on this moon that she's been a slave for all these years and he didn't know but miari in here has lived her whole life terrified of these aliens because they've just been sexually assaulting everyone she knows and so she is not for this new alien dude coming in here and trying to take her back to the planet she's like i don't know who you are your men have been like hurting us for years like no I'm not doing, going with you at all. And so it is not like registering in him. Like she doesn't know what a maiden bond pair is like at all. Like she was not taught any of the same stuff he was. She grew up as a slave. I really loved these characters and how much they learned from each other. Like I said before, Elizabeth Stevens just throws you into the deep end of this world and expects you to kind of like learn as you go. And you learn through the characters learning things. It's really cool. I'm really excited to read other books so I can learn even more about these many worlds and these many different aliens like it's gonna be so cool <laughs> for trigger warnings you have sa not the main characters like main characters do not sa each other but there is talk of sa like i just mentioned like it's throughout a lot of this book this book is very dark okay it gets it gets dark there's attempted sa with some of the main characters uh death gore blood slavery starvation discussion of women being objects there's a lot this book is one of the darkest in the romances that I've read. I think Elizabeth Stevens did an amazing job in this book. Um, for tropes, you have alien romance, faded mates. There's a female alien, the hero falls first. It's on Kindle Unlimited. There's a language barrier at first between the two of them. Um, a never been kissed trope. The hero has never been kissed before because his people don't kiss. Um, you have a possessive hero, um, tails. The tails have kind of like a mind of their own and they like, they like wrap around each other without like, her wanting it to the tail just does it on her own and she's so pissed at her tail and lastly you have a worshiping hero i ended up giving this book four to five stars do you wish there was more of a emotional development between the two characters before they full force started like loving each other there was just like that little inkling for me but i cannot wait to read the other books in the series i'm so excited and the last book that i'm going to talk about today is heartless <laughs> by elsie silver um this is a book that has been everywhere it's a second book in the chestnut spring series and everyone and their mother has read this book and has loved it. I have not read a review, seen a review under five stars. Like all of them have been five stars. I ended up buddy reading this with Rachel. We're just buddy reading everything together. I love it. This is the romance between Willa and Cade. Um, Willa ends up becoming Cade's nanny for his four or five year old son. And yeah, they end up falling in love. Cade is a very grumpy, gruff man who works on his ranch and he needs Willa to come take care of Luke, his son, while he's working. And I loved every single aspect of this book. So I'm not going to talk you off too much about this one because 
Like everyone knows about it. Everyone loves it. <laughs> I'm just another person who loved this book. I'm also currently reading this book for a nanny romance reading vlog that will be out later in uh, March. So you can look forward to that. And I'll go more into my thoughts in that video for sure. So um, I just wanna say, I love this book and I'll leave it at that. I will list the tropes for you though, because there are so many. I just, I have to list them for you. Okay, you have um, age gap romance, boss employee, a brooding hero, caretaking scene, she gets so ill and he takes care of her and it's so sweet. Um, you have a cowboy, forced proximity because they have to live in the same house together, great banter, grumpy sunshine. Kate has a mouth on him, mouth on him for sure. Um, hyped book, uh, Kindle Limited, a meet cute moment that is to die for, loved it. Um, you have a nanny romance, romance with kids. Um, it's a part of a sibling series, a single dad, a single parent romance, small town, and that's it. <laughs> So you'll know more of my thoughts when that vlog comes out. So look forward to that towards the end of March. But there you have it. Those are all the books that I've read so far in the first half of March. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a cow emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I'll see y'all soon in the next one. Bye y'all.